Um, okay, so I've got a friend here um, who's at my house, and we're going to see if he can talk too without us creating like some kind of like rip in space time. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, so let's see. Wait, I don't think we have any viewers yet. It usually takes like a few minutes to kind of like build up viewers. Um, oh, we've got a couple of viewers, but like in the chat, post if you can hear my friend. And I'm not even going to say your name because I think you want to remain completely crypto anonymous. Can you like say your name? Hello. Wait, are you dialed into the Discord or not? Oh, um, Discord, it's called, like, port. It's, like, P. I didn't even upload an Abby. <laughs> like, I'm so lazy. It's just a letter P. <laughs> I th oh, wait, didn't you un, um, okay. So go to my channel, my Twitch channel, and go below my face, and the Discord link should be, like, should just say Discord, like a black box that says oh, Discord. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, a bit less uh, rejoin, too. <laughs> Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's look at the chart. I'm going to type a comment in the comment section. Can y'all hear my friend? I'm not going to say your name, so... You're just my friend. You're my anonymous friend. So I still haven't figured out the music problem, you know, where like the music is too loud in my earbuds, but then you can't hear. Oh, my stream froze? Are you connected to, um, yeah, exploits 5G, and you've got the password, right? Oh, I have to post on like, you know, the various places where I post. Yeah, I post Twitter. Sometimes I post in the BitMEX troll box. Mm -hmm. And um, I post in Cryptopolis. You know, I don't hear you in the Discord voice, but I do hear you Sorry, in my let me hear. Oh, now I hear Better? Now. Better? Yeah, now I hear, yeah, now now I hear you in your voice. voice. That's really funny. Still not in um, Twitch. Didn't we get that working somehow last time? Yeah. Um, yeah um, or was that just did the... I, did I tell you that we figured, figured out that Cartel, cartel like, like, vandalized my, my, my Discord? They, no. they, they went in and went in the permissions on my general voice chat. Pretty crazy, huh? Fun group. Yeah. Yeah. Like, real nice real people. And all because all I because talk, I too, much talk about too much about myself. Yeah, I believe that. Persian trader. Oh yeah, I remember that guy from last time. Yeah, he's yeah. one of them. Um, he's like a turnip fan. Okay. Uh, uh, let me let post me these post. links so we can like con some people into watching this. <laughs> Got three streamers, three viewers. Oh shit! Is it gonna be gonna weird be to like weird hear to each like other, like each other, in like... the? Actually, maybe there's a way I can turn down the Discord. Uh, yeah, I'm.
I'm going to yeah. turn you yeah. down in the Discord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can turn me down. And we'll just remember, have to remember to like turn each other up again when we're not in front of each other. Okay, perfect. Yeah, now you're all the way muted. Um, I don't hear you on stream yet. Let me make sure. Okay, let's post some links. Try to try to ponzi some people into this. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I still don't. I still don't hear you. I don't hear you on stream. But I assume that if you're talking into the, the Discord thing, I can. Oh, you know what? I just realized that like I can't turn you down in um, on mine. Here's the thing: I can't turn you down because they're hearing what I hear. Oh, I see. They're hearing what you hear. Yeah. So I can just mute mine. Okay, guys, sorry, hey guys sorry, 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 this is sorry, so this annoying, 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 but, um, but um, I'm trying to make it, make it my friend is right in front, right front of me, but he's also, also in the Discord. <laughs> what up? What up? Okay, let me yeah, post some up. links. You guys, you guys are seeing the height of my ADD of my in action. It's like it's weird. I guess there's a like uh, echo from both of our mics or something. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. If you'll just yell, I just have yours over there. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should move closer to each other. Never been this close to a girl before. <laughs> Hello. Okay, did you did you X out of the Discord? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I think, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I think people can hear it. You might want to turn your output volume up. Oh, okay. So you can, maybe they'll hear us both louder. Guys, feel free to ask us questions about um, Bitcoin, ICOs, shit coins, like. You know how fast we're all going to be poor. <laughs> like whatever you want. <laughs> we're just trying to figure out how to do this with both of us in the room, but trying to like pick up like my mic. Actually, I wonder if I should like clip my mic to like here. Will that be better? Something like that. Okay, voice and video. And then you said to turn up the uh, output volume? Yeah, on Discord. Okay, to like 120? Oh, okay, should I not do that? So like 134? Go to, yeah, Discord. So I'm, I'm at it, but it should it be like 134? Or... Yeah, um, I'm seeing it now. Did you say something? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, just do the output volume. Oh, 200? Oh, so there's a number on it? Let me see. Oh, wow. Yeah, try like 160. Okay. Okay, got it. Testing. Okay. 
time to con some people to come in here. Who's going to come in here? Well, every night. That's the question. <laughs> oh, my God. Half the just user acquisition cost. That's right. User acquisition cost. That's, where, that's, that's v, the problem. VC. VC, VC language. <laughs> you know, it's right. It's fine. It's fine. Right. Look at this. Okay. Um, you guys feel free to ask me questions about uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I'm just trying to like set this up for a second. But you know, populate the chat with questions. While you wait for me to get my act together here. Okay, where's. It's a lot of plugins, Julie, on your Chrome. Plugins? Yeah. Yeah, I do have a lot of plugins. Well, half of those are crypto related, if you mm -hmm. can believe it. <laughs> Who's the fourth viewer? We got one more viewer. Well, sometimes people watch without being um, logged in, so uh, you don't know who's watching. Um, so hi, anonymous perv. Should probably turn it. Yeah, he's watching while streaming. <laughs> oh, for sure, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's our official troll of the stream. You know, he was in here stream. Uh, trolling FMF last night, right? Did Bibless tell you that? No. He was like totally. Uh, FMF? Yeah, he was trolling our beloved FMF. No, FMF is going to the moon, bro. Yeah, he's insane. Crypto bank. This is not a good angle on me. I feel like my, like my rhythm is off because like I've got a friend here, you know. It's just all. Going <laughs> uh, Brock Pierce is tweeting out motivational quotes now. Oh, God. That's a sure sign of doom, like worse than Bitcoin crashing, right? Ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that gets in them. Don't let, ha don't let what's happening around you get inside you and weigh you down.
Okay, let me just do this Lincoln BitMEX troll boss. Oh, that's a great troll. I got banned the other night for doing it, but I it was only for one day, I think. Somebody unbanned me. Okay. All right. Where do you where do you think Bitcoin is going? Three K. I think so too. I think it's going to be a long, painful, painful, uncomfortable, rotten <laughs> struggle to get there. It's going to be a slow bleed with ups and downs, ups and downs, but the trend is down. Yeah. Hi everybody. It's good to see you here. Can you guys hear my friend? Because he doesn't want to be on camera. So, um, I think they should be able to hear me fine. Just Cer say if you can't hear his up. voice, because if, if not, then like, uh, wait, you said sup plebs. You just got mad at me for calling people plebs like an hour ago. <laughs> it's part of the, it's part of the Julie brand. Oh, it's part of my brand now? Fuck off. <laughs> like literally an hour ago, he was like getting on my case for like calling people in a discord plebs. And now he's like calling my valuable viewers plebs like fuck you <laughs> valuable viewers okay that's what you want to call them oh, okay um can you guys hear his voice because we're trying to figure out how to do this audio thing um can you hear me <laughs> You'll find that a lot of people just watch without ever like commenting in the chat, which is like disconcerting. Uh, so what do you mean by turn the volume up? Cause no, I don't for them. For oh, them. okay. Like, I have to turn my volume up to 100, like, and now I can hear myself. Oh, okay. So if you're playing music... Oh, so it's... you can actually hear yourself on here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can? Okay. But I have to turn it up. Okay. Okay, got it. Um, okay, so let's talk about Bitcoin. Um... Got 13 viewers. I am thinking that this. Oh, I, by the way, I shield you as an ICO expert, <laughs> which <Fuck>. you are. <laughs> but you are. You are. Okay. Yeah. I think that's fair, right? Fair enough. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about ICOs. Like, I I feel like people um are a little bit frightened. Like, I feel like people who aren't used to investing in ICOs are a little bit frightened of investing in ICOs right now. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. You but should, should they be? It, for the average person, yes, because most of the average ICOs will get dumped on so hard. You're right. But if you get into a good ICO and you have a good connection via VC or some sort of other friend or trusted third party, that might be okay to just park your ETH in there for a while when it launches. Because the good ones, they don't launch immediately and they have a lot of long lockup times. Mm -hmm. So even if Bitcoin dumps, that ratio versus ETH should stay the same. The danger you have to avoid is, you know, the VC bag. They'll get in seed round, and then you'll be buying round three, round four. They bought it for two cents. You're buying for 20, 30, 50 cents, and then they're, you know, it's off their hands. They're good. Then you have to wait till I exchange or whatever, and who knows how long that's going to take. And then when that happens, the VCs are just going to dump their bags too, and you're just going to go. Wow. So let me... Let me ask you to explain that a little bit further. So when you're saying like avoid the VC bags, like you don't mean when a VC will dump their allocation onto like a pool. That's not what you're uh, talking about. No, that is what I'm talking about. You should know exactly where you're getting that allocation from and what's the source. What are the what are that what is the allocation details? Because if you don't know that and you don't cross reference that with other people like hey, 
did you get the same tier? Like, you, is this is this the deal that you're getting? Uh huh. If you can't if you can't establish some sort of uh, console with there, it's like oh, like I don't know if this is a scam or if I'm getting jumped on. So it's that's kind of hard. You, so, but how do you do that kind of like cross referencing when they're all like, like don't oh, like oh, don't leak, don't leak, or you're gonna get kicked, kicked out of the pool, and yeah. like you know, it's so hard to get into these pools to begin with, and you know, it's how do you how do you do that cross referencing? So basically, you have to make friends, you have to be around the space, you have to offer value to people, and so like if you just go into a random place and ask, somebody might tell you, but. If you want to know for something that's kind of hot, you have to kind of be here in the space. People have to kind of know you. Like, all right, this guy, like, he's around. Like, he's asking the right questions. Like, and they'll just tell you. Like, but if you're a random coming in, going out, they're like, I don't know who you are. They're, they're not going to really, like, dive. they're not going to take a risk or anything. What, like, if, you know, what if you're an, an unlikable person? <laughs> if you're an unlikable person, as long as you have value or can be useful, they'll tell you. <laughs> okay. But if you're just straight up unlikable and not valuable to them, they probably won't tell you. So, I guess like I, I guess I was under the impression that investing in private presales was sort of like, like as long as you knew it was a private presale, like that was enough. I guess I. So the private v, the private sale has changed to VC and then private sale. Mm hmm. Before the VCs weren't even messing with crypto, they're like, "This is a, I don't want to touch this trash." Now they're like, "Wow, this is the easiest money I've ever made! Like, I just need to get in the earliest round, angel round, and then the pre-sale will go to the pool groups, and then the ice, then there's the ICO, and then there's the exchange. So there's four levels now. Yeah. VC level, which is the earliest you can get. And VC is essentially angel, right? Yeah, VC is essentially. I mean, the, there is one technical early round, and that's like friends and family. That's basically the project founder. Mm -hmm. Right, so there's project founders, but that's like not really the case. So it's VCs, pool groups, ICO, if there is one, and then exchange. That's the, like, that's the fucking. And pool groups isn't an official tier. That's sort of like a sub tier. That's podge sub tier. That's just like people are sharing allocations when they're not supposed to, but you know it happens because VCs want to unload and they're like, oh, who do we want to unload to the pool because. There's a lot of buying demand, and we, you know we can get our allocations. We can get, we can get off. Uh, we can sell our bags without trouble. But okay, so this is something that really confuses me about the pools: is that like all of any good project says we don't accept pools, and if we find out that a pool has gotten our tokens, you will be refunded, or you're just going to lose all your money. Yeah. How how do you explain the fact that there's all these pools running these operations? And the, and all the pools will if you're I'm in a bunch of pools and all these pools reassure you like no no like we have our ways how does that square? So that's all. It's kind of like the whole legal dance. They're basically just saying like oh shit we're gonna cover our ass if we hear something about pooling or uh, even the VC is like oh if we hear something about pooling we're gonna like oh we it wasn't us like we, we're gonna cancel the pool whatever we cancel the project. Everybody says all that shit especially the founders of the project. They don't want any liability with promoting or marketing the security. Yeah. They're not going to be like, oh, we're, we're not going to like, uh, we're just going to let that fly by, you know, oops, yeah, he pulled, but he didn't mean to. Like, no, 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 it's just a no zero ton. It's like, because the SEC yeah. or whatever regulatory agency will come after them. So they say that, but in reality, what will happen is they'll be like, yeah, if it wasn't brazen, they'll be like, shit, this is money that we're going to lose. And if their project isn't like the best of the best in this bear market, they're not going to get that money that quickly again. Right. So they're like, uh, like okay, we're going to cancel the pool, but like, hey, can you get an accredited investor to like, can you just pass that all that shit to him and then like just send Brett back to us? You know, like, it's just really, that's pretty much what it is. It's technically So it's not, ass covering for the SEC. It's ass covering for the SEC. I mean, that's, there are legit groups who don't like pools and they will cancel, but those are really the best projects. And they know they can get allocation easy peasy from somewhere else. But if you're like an average project and you're like, oh shit, like, yeah, we pulled, but like, yeah, fuck it, like, bro, yeah, we're gonna cancel this pool and look, we returned it. But that person will just send it to somebody else who's an accredited and be like, oh yeah, shit, here's a little commission, boom, thank you, it goes right back. Yeah, if they have the assets there and then it, people cause a shitstorm about it, they're not trying to give it back. They want to keep that somewhere. They just want to cover their ass. That's all it is. So. You said that like 
it, it, it's actually better to do long lockups. But for most people, um, you know, most people who are going to be watching the stream are not going to be accredited investors or are going to have to go through pools. Yeah. So, so wouldn't you agree that um, doing a long lockup um, through a pool is kind of dangerous because you don't even know if a pool is going to be around in like six months. Like how are, how how can you be sure you're gonna get your you know your coins that are locked up for like twelve months? Yeah, like, that's a great point. Pool might not be around in twelve months. Like the yeah. coin might not be the project might not be around in twelve months. Like you know having a coin locked up for twelve months like scares the shit out of me. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. I think if you're pooling with uh, if you're sending your money to pools and they are and the project is promising like yeah six tokens will be released six months later on a very limited basis and then it'll take a year for everything to get distributed right so like that is pretty risky if you're in some public pool i probably would not recommend that um but if you have some in or a trusted friend or somebody you've kind of you've kind of been around with and you kind of like think they're legit obviously use your discretion here some people are scammers some people aren't but if you get something that's not through a pool to a source you somewhat trust, that might not be a bad option in a bear market where things don't. It keeps your, you know, you kind of just forget about it and you know eventually the project's going to go above the, you know, the ICO ratio, hopefully. Um, because after a really bad bear market, like, there's going to be a bull market. So that's what you're kind of setting yourself up for. But if you're going through a pool, man, uh, yeah, you, you got to be careful. The long lockups, that's just an incentive to run you. And they have been scammed. A lot of big people have been scammed too by VCs. Yeah. Or somebody pretending to be a VC, saying we have allocation, showing SAPs, you know, like showing fake legal documents, signed, saying that they signed it with the project, and then boom, people send 5,000 ETH. Oh, that's gone. Like, oh shit. So pools are. Pools are risky, really risky. And unless you're contributing something to them, whether it's community management, whether it's just sharing, showing up with analysis, like if you're not a part of the community, you show up and be like, yo, like, let me get some allocation real quick. You're probably not gonna get them. Like that tier, that level of ease is gone. Like it's, it's leveled up now. And it's gonna get harder and harder in my opinion um, as more and more VCs, as more and more like big money comes in and regulations clamp down even further in other countries so so let me just make sure i understand like how this stuff like because like, i i don't i don't think i want to make sure i have that clear in my mind like the way that like the tiers work so mm -hmm. uh the vcs dump to pools and the yeah. pools basically get like the allocations that the the vc sort of like no longer wants by the time the pool gets it it might have gone through like uh sort of like levels almost of like yeah no the price has increased yeah like like but multiple times or just usually just once that depends on each project mm -hmm. uh, because vcs will pass it around themselves right the seed round will pass it to round uh round one and then they might be round two it probably won't be much more after that, but usually there's a couple rounds. So the seed round is like the first. Those are the those are the biggest risk, most reward. But if you're like if they have a, for example, if you have a project that comes out, they they want to raise like twenty million, right? Seed round maybe they're taking like applicants, maybe they're taking five million in seed round, and people get their token for like one cent each. Mm -hmm. Those guys will flip that and be like, hey, we want to sell this for five cents to round one. Round one will be like, hey, we want to flip this to 10 cents for round two. And then round two is like, shit, I don't want this. Like, let me flip it to the ICO pool guys to divide it up for 20 cents. And so we'll get it, like the plebs like us will get it for like 20 cents. And then the VCs might still have some because they probably didn't sell their whole bag. But then when it comes out on exchange, guess what? Done. They're, and like they're, VCs are ready to dump like on day one of the exchange. Day one, day one. They are like at least two x usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're more conservative, it'll be like one point something x. But they're never selling at a loss ever. So then they're selling at like let's say three cents, but then the pool people are bag holding at twenty cents. They have a long, strong incentive to hold. It's a long haul. And they're fucked. 
basically. Much, yeah, and uh, unless the project does what it's supposed to do and you go eventually, but you know, everything in between. And are you is. saying this is happening like every every time or like? No, not every time. I mean, uh, can pool? Can people in pools like make a profit? Yes, but over a longer period of time. If you, the quick ice seal flips, those are rare, especially if you go for things from DC. You have to go for random, more risky bets. Now, oh, no VCs really got it because it was too sketchy for the DC level. Yeah. It was only shared for the ICO groups, but it's still like a project. Maybe it's coming from Slovenia or Russia or, you know, some like second tier project. Yeah. That it doesn't have some big investment bank behind it. Those ones you can flip. Those might be almost better. But mm -hmm. the due diligence to make sure that people aren't straight up scamming, mm -hmm. that's more on you. The other ones, you know, they're not scams, but they're just not going to be profitable. So that's the. Those are, the, those are the things you have to look at. The space just keeps changing, so... So then why are people in pools like still so excited about getting these allocations? Because there's always hope. In the next bull run, this shit should move. So so what you're describing is sort of the situation during the bear market. Mm -hmm. And 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 the people who are sort of so, still so excited about these allocations are kind of remembering what it was like during the bull run and kind of like hoping that this thing is going to turn around. I'm looking at the weekly, the Bitcoin weekly chart now, and I'm kind of like, this isn't turning around anytime soon. Yeah, no, I, the next bull run, the next potential thing, institutional money, infrastructure play, whatever, whatever, pension funds, whatever you want to call it, like that, that is the dream. And it doesn't matter what you put your money in. Bitcoin, okay, technically the 10X to 200K, like that's still amazing. But if you got in on something at like twenty cents and it went to ten dollars, like that's that's fifty x. Like, and the VCs have got in, that's almost way way more, right? So that is possible. And if you invest in a legit project from a VC thing, who's to say that FOMO later on down the road won't make that moon too? But that is a big gamble. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend almost waiting it out until it hits the exchange, let it dumpster, it, and then buy some. Or throw a baby bag in the pool, or whatever, and then wait six months, a year, and be like, all right, it's coming out, let's see what it does, and it dumpsters. Then you average down, or if you care, or whatever, and then you wait. Because most of the Silicon Valley ones are not scams, but they are not going to be aggressively promoting them. You have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Any of the big DC ones, they're not allowed to, unless they officially register themselves as a security, instead of go through all the utility token, they're not allowed to go and be like, yo, get on Twitter, let's shill this shit. Like, no, like that pump and dump shit, no. It's like, you know, we're building a token here, look, we, we're trying to hire like people, or we, we booked this client. Like, that's like boring, slow news, instead of like, when Binance. Like, that's, you know, that's all you, that's all moon tips are, when Binance. No, like, client, like, yeah, okay. Maybe eventually, once they're you know once their bags are filled, then it's like, oh look, we're saving the world like crypto. But you want to get that initial out with some profit, and then you can just chill. But if you're under, you're like, no, we can't, we can't break even at least ten times. So yeah, it's um. Because it, it, from the pools I'm in, it seems like their allocations are filling really fast, and you know, like I, that almost surprises me considering the. <laughs> The bear yeah, market. Yeah, there, there's. I don't know how legit that is. I don't know. Oh, you think they kind of like make a smoke they screen could, they of? Could, they could artificially, yeah, they could create artificial scarcity. They could do, they could do a lot. There's no transparency in any of this. Yeah. Um, they could just like throw a bunch of ETH into a wallet just to sort of make it seem yeah, like it filled it's up. It's own pool. The pool's owners just like, okay, let's put it here. Look, wow, guys, it's filling in. Everyone's like, oh shit, like, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying everyone's doing that, but if they needed to, like fill up an allocation, like, they could do that. And then, before passing it off to the VCs, like, yeah, we didn't get this. But you know what? Ultimately, the pool owners have incentive to get people to freaking submit, because they they bought that bag from somebody. They got that bag from somebody. Mm -hmm. so they're like, shit, like, I want to get the pool fees, and that's all. Okay, I don't want to touch, I don't want to touch the shit going. I need to get people in here. So, you know, they'll artificially FOMO, it's like, oh, somebody left. Like, there's more room now opened up later after the FOMO was justified. All right, guys, come in, you know, like, that kind of stuff. All that stuff. All that stuff. All that's there. So are you still buying allocations now? 
I'm buying some. I haven't bought in any in like maybe like two three weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm just like I'm just trying to go flat. I'm trying to because of the tether. because of the market. Yeah, I mean because yeah. of the market, because of the lack of hype. I'm just like it's almost better just to like do some real work, build an audience, do some other shit, mm -hmm. and prep for the next run. Yeah. Instead of like trying to get these, you can do mini games here, but. Almost it's better to just lay the plumbing for the next you know, thing. I had the same thought like yesterday. I was sort of like, I almost wish I just sort of spent this time like not even trying to trade, you know, just sort of like just sit, you know, just like resting, <laughs> like, you know, like, like using this time yeah. well and like, yeah. you know, because, but like who could have known in, in like, um, no. you know, in January, like if, 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 if you had told us in January that the price would be, would have done this by June, like how depressing would that have been, man? Oh yeah, I mean, I haven't never, I've never been through a full market cycle, but I've seen that graph. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, this hasn't happened yet, and I didn't, you know, I never thought it was gonna go like to I don't know forty k, fifty k this year. It could still, but I just don't. I never thought that was gonna happen. My my only thing was like, I'm bullish on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. I don't care about anything else. I'm bullish on Ethereum, and not because of, I don't know, like. Price stuff. It's it's mostly just because of their developments with like plasma developments with sharding. It's real. It's real shit. I'm like, this is cool. This is actually going to change Ethereum scalability a lot. And if more people are using the network, like the value just exponentially grows. You know. What do you see as Ethereum's use case? I think it'll still be used for a shit ton of ICOs. I think it'll be a platform that a lot of D apps are built on. Uh huh. Fifty thousand. I read something the other day like. 50,000 developers every month, I don't know if that's true, I didn't cross-check or anything, but they're starting off with Ethereum, you know, and there has still no, there's still no real competitor to it mm -hmm. in terms of the openness, in, the, in terms of the accessibility. Yeah, it's slow, but the ideals are what really attract a lot of developers, right? And, I mean, money too, but like EOS, like, I mean, they've just been botching up their launch and there's a lot of lack of transparency. There's all this shit, and it's supposed to be the Ethereum killer, whatever, whatever, but it can barely do what the fuck it's trying to do. Whereas Ethereum, like, yeah, it had a lot of, you know, troubling starts, but now, it, when, when EOS, okay, so what makes me really bullish on Ethereum is not the actual, like, besides the tokenomics and the team, is the way they approach and solve problems. Mm -hmm. When you have Bitcoin... Oh, block size, but it turns into a war, right? And and no side wins, and it just becomes like this big mess. And Bitcoin is the only immutable chain, so there's no forks allowed. Everybody, all the toxicity has to stay there, and two sides just have to deal with it. In Ethereum, that happened in the DAO hack, and people were like, "Yo, like I want immutable chain." Most people were like, "Dude, I just want my money back. Like, <laughs> fuck this shit. I don't, I don't care. I mean, I I believe in the ideals, but like, this is too much. It's too rigid." So they were like, okay, you guys go be Ethereum Classic. If you don't want to be in this group, like, just go right there, and it's fine. But we're going to choose the route of most practical, most pragmatic, most uh, beneficial to the, to the most, like, to the, uh, to the most many, to as many people as possible on our network, right? Like, that's the, that's the ideology they went with. And that ideology is, I think, really, that culture is really hard to create. Um, I think Vitalik is a good, good, he kind of implemented that early. He models that. He models ethos. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he fights back against criticism, but he also looks and says like, "Hey, we actually do have some real weaknesses. Let's work on this together." Instead of like, "This is the way it is. This is my thing. This is my shit." He's like, "Oh wow, that's really cool. I didn't think you could do side chain scaling like that." You know what? I need to rethink some shit. That that is that long term is going to compound way more, and people like that. And there's going to be fuck ups in Ethereum again, but I think the way they approach it is hopefully going. To, I mean, there's now, but there's so much more money at stake, so all of this could be fucked up anyway. But I mean, I do you know how much they talk about culture and community in Silicon Valley? Just culture alone is so huge to like startup cult, you know? Yeah, they talk about it, but most most Silicon Valley companies, what are they doing now? They're just creating a company and exiting to the big five. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna compete with Apple, Amazon, Google? Like, no, it, fuck that shit. Like, build a shitty company. Not, it's 
build a company that solves a thing. Oh, you know what? I want to sell it to like Amazon. All right, cool. I'm gonna start. Let me take that money and start another thing. And like that's that's just easy though. There are some people who want to start their own mega billion like company, but in these days, it's like really you want to you want to go through all that stress? Like look what happened to Snapchat. It's trying to go up against Facebook, and Facebook's destroying it. Instagram, like you know, how are you gonna go up against these guys? You have to have a crazy vision. You need to be resilient. You need to go through hell and back. Mm-hmm. It's almost easy. I mean, it's almost way easier just to be like, yo, just get acquired and live you don't have to work again like no i need to see like you know, it's just exit so the culture yeah talk yeah 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 okay that's great but it you know this is this is different and, and ethereum's culture is not the best still there's a lot of problems but out of the other ones i've seen the way they approach it the way improvement protocols are submitted improvement things are submitted and, and there's a debate even after the parity hack when all the big wallets their money was stuck and nobody could get, and the community was like, you know what? Like, there's no single formula, but why should they get preference when if our shit got stuck, we wouldn't get that, right? And it's unfair, but people voted, and it was like, okay, you know, that's most tactical right now. It's not as tactical to prefer these guys and undo some shit, so they're like, ah, fuck it. And it just keeps moving on. It just keeps moving on. So I don't know how any of this is going to work. Obviously, this is all a fucking experiment, but... Ethereum to me seems the most reasonable out of all the other options. It's not the shining light. It's just like, yo, this compared to what I've seen, like Yeah. This has a shot at fulfilling like one percent of its promise and at the moment it does any sort of real just real thing that solves a real problem, you know what the moon kids are gonna do. Yeah, they're gonna go nuts. It's gonna go it's gonna go through the races. All the articles, all the shills are gonna be out, oh my god, like Crypto application goes viral, like, destroys... <laughs> Crypto application actually works and does something? <laughs> Holy fuck, like, yeah, everything's a scam right now. The moment the, <laughs> the moment anything goes legit, it's it's off to the races. All the scams are going to move, Ethereum, everything's going to move. So that's I think that's going to happen. It might be in a very small sector, but there is that first pump. That's amazing, yeah. too. And that pump, if you don't sell something... You gotta You're going to sell your entire stack of Ethereum, no, 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 that I'm, first pump? I'm not going to sell no entire stack. I'm taking I, profits. I think this thing could go to like 5000 this year. No. You don't think so? No. Ethereum? Scalability is one thing, but it has to go and reach. Wait, I'm going to pull up the Ethereum chart. Let's take a look at this thing. $5,000? Fuck no. Not End year. of year? You don't think so? Hell no. I'm going <laughs> to... Why are you a moon? You're, I'm a moon girl. <laughs> you're a moon girl. <laughs> I mean, holy fuck! You know, I forgot. Days? I forgot we're already in June. So, like, I was kind of thinking that at the beginning of the year, like maybe, you know, I, I can see like one to two, like stable, five mm-hmm. k stable. I mean, if you touch it... I'm saying it's going to be stable. Come on. Who are you kidding? If you go to 5K and back down to like fucking four, five hundred, like it would have to settle to at least like two, three. But I I don't know. I don't think... I don't know if it's... I don't know when scalability is coming, but the new stuff that's coming out is even better than what they had before. But it's going to take a little bit longer, I think. Did I tell you I watched this video about um, OMG? It was like the OMG holiday special. Oh, no. I need... I still need to watch that. Is it good? It's, I wouldn't call it good. It definitely helped me understand OMG better. Mm-hmm. The problem is, I was watching her on stream with Numkeet, one of our mods, and um, the problem is, it, 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 like I said, it helped me understand uh, like why OMG is useful better, but it didn't make me want to in- invest in OMG more because it, it made me understand why they're so bad at marketing. Who, OMG? Yeah. Because they're like, I know you love OMG, I but love, like, it's such a I, meme know, coin. I know, OMG. it's a total meme coin, which is why, like, <laughs> which is why you love it. But the thing is, like, it was like all these autists, like, gathered around some, like, coconut hut or something. It was like, Vitalik was there, and it was so cringe. Like, and like, oh, no. Vitalik was doing a great job at explaining plasma and everything. And I was like, oh, it seems like they, they really, like, know what they're talking about. But it was like, they need to, like, hire some marketing special specialist and not, like, you know, rely on, like, skateboard, you know, sticking an Apple logo to a fucking skateboard. <laughs> it was just like... Yeah. I, I, it was cringe. It was it was total cringe. That's just that crypto space. It's just a bunch of... bunch of autistic people, like, doing really interesting shit, but once they get out of their element, it just, like, 
Whoa. Like, embarrassing. Yeah, solving homomorphic encryption, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, that's, you know, let me tell you all about that. You know, it's wild. They can't wait to tell you about it, too. So, marketing your project in a, I don't know, a reasonable way to the financial and technological community, like, <laughs> it's like that, that's a whole nother, uh, it's like they live under rocks or something. <laughs> they live in a different world, man. I mean, it, it really, it, with this ETH prediction, like, you know, okay, you're going to be laughing at me in December, I, you know, I know, but, like, it really depends, <laughs> it really depends, that's it, if we're still friends, <laughs> let's caveat this, um, but, but it really depends on, like, how low we go with Bitcoin here, like, how long ETH stays coupled to the Bitcoin price, because um, a lot of people were predicting that, that, <laughs> stop, now you're making fun of me in chat. <laughs> You're trying to get them to turn against me. Um, no, I'll be down for 5K. I just, I just, that seems so crazy. But you know what? I've been proved wrong. Well, before. part of it is that you're this huge bag holder, so it's hard for you to, like, fathom that, like, you know, it could, like, go up that mm. big, you know? Um, I, I could even see one to two. Because I was seeing predictions of ETH 5K by, like, November of last <laughs> year. Stop! <laughs> November last year, holy that like fuck. that that would happen. Th you know that that would happen this year. Oh. But like that God. wasn't taking into account this bear market. But you know. People think the next big run is going to be Bitcoin happening. Uh huh. Happening at the block award twenty twenty. And I don't know why, but that's what the thing I hear. You don't think we're going to have a, a bull run before that? I think we will. I think we will too. I think we will. It might not be the. Biggest run, but it'll be a run. I think though. there's too much interest. I mean, maybe we just live in a bubble now, but like. No, scaling, scaling will. Some sort of scaling will come. Whether it's like rudimentary. With Ethereum's at 15 transactions a second. If they get it to 100, that is like. I don't know. How many more orders of magnitude? Four? Five? That's huge still. If they even. And that's like supposedly not super hard. I, I don't know, but the the real hard the real hard stuff is getting like that truly global scalability, like two thousand transactions a second type stuff. If you can do hundred transactions, like, and that's legit, and it works just like it does, it's faster. Like, that's gonna change the game. More people are gonna do stuff, more apps gonna be created. But the real good stuff isn't coming until it's just like real, real thing, like instant, right? And that'll come, I think. I hope. But I, I think you can get at least 100 transactions a second on Ethereum. Easy peasy. No, I'm not a math guy, but it's going to come, and that'll cause a spike. So 5K, once the dream, once the decentralized global computing network, once that, once that dream is you know, possible. Right now it's like, yeah, it'll happen. But when, when it gets closer and closer, I mean, everyone's like, oh, this is just going to happen. It's going to work. It doesn't even have to happen. It just has to look like it's happening, right? And the moon people will take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that'll happen. Okay. They're like, we're going to release this. Like, look at this test net. Like, even if it's, even when they, re even if they release it and shit fucks up badly, leading up to it, it's going to be like, oh shit, look, it's on test net. It's scaling fast. It's like working <laughs> fucking awesome. Like, oh shit, like, it's oh, on test net. Oh shit, <laughs> Ethereum, like 5K. You know, for someone who doesn't consider himself a moon boy, you seem to really understand their thinking. Like, I yeah, feel like I've got I a gremlin. A I've got a gremlin in the house. <laughs> no, you gotta be a moon boy. You gotta be a moon boy, but you gotta put yourself in a moon moon kid situation. Oh, okay. But you gotta be like. So you basically like embedded with the moon boys, and you you okay. you you like dressed like them, and you thought like them, and you lived like them. Yeah, yeah. And you you did all for research like, then. Yeah, but then I'm like, is that realistic? No, but I want to think like they do, so I can. Otherwise, you're just gonna, I don't know, like buy the top, right? You're like, oh shit, yeah, like 5K, what the fuck, I don't wanna miss out, 10K. <laughs> 10K Ethereum, end of year. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not saying this is going to happen, no, I'm just I saying mean, that, like. You gotta put that shit on your Twitter, like, stop. Public record. <laughs> like, it's part of my username. <laughs> yeah, like, everybody else calls it. 30k by end of year, like, 
Alright, well, 5K end of year Ethereum. Fuck, fuck it. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the ICO discussion. Um, like, how fast till the ICO space just becomes, like, an extension of VC space where, like, plebs like us, like, like can't. It's already happened. Yeah, it's, it's already it's there. It's already happened. There, But the thing is, the next, in a bear market, it's going to be like that. Only VCs get good shit. In a bull market? You think it'll exp- the market will sort of expand out again in the yeah, bull market? Yeah, because, you know, so in a bear market, the only people who want to give money away are people who who have extra capital and they want to give it away to like good projects that they think will return a, a reward in the future, right? How many good projects are there in crypto? Very, very few. Mm-hmm. So those projects go to VCs and the VCs will fight over and dump it and get it. In a bull market, everyone is like into crypto and guess who comes out of the woodwork? All the shitty mid-tier projects. They'll be like, yo, like we're raising just $1 million for our like email. Like we're doing email. <laughs> email <blockchain>. app. <laughs> We're doing like fucking, you know, we're tracking supply chain on the blockchain. Like, oh my god, another supply chain one? Great, that's what I want. Oh, we're gonna list on exchange like in like right after ICO. I'm like, all right, here's here's like ten ETH, go, and then boom, flip it. You know, like that's that's how it that's how it is. All the shitty projects will come out in the next bull run, and everyone's like, yeah, like amazing, because there's still gonna be countries with very loose regulatory um, uh, agencies. Kong, Singapore, a lot of Chinese coins still are very loosey goosey. Yeah. Um, I would say even like Malta is gonna be like there's gonna be scams for sure, but they're all gonna come out, and a lot of them, they know that like yeah this is whatever, but we're gonna try to do something to like you know like whatever like we're gonna raise our money, build an app, and like oh it didn't work out. Whoops. Oh, good thing I have like two thousand ETH in my like owner. I'll just hold on to that, I guess, and you know, retire early, or maybe I'll do another ICO, and like, or advise another ICO. Be like, oh, we built a successful app, like on the blockchain. I want to advise like another ICO, and that's where you get even more money for doing nothing except bringing in money. So the 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 the, the pyramid scheme gets the pyramid yeah, pyramid scheme gets bigger. Oh yeah, yeah. ICOs aren't done. So for people who like like are currently invested in ICOs or sort of like, you know, I got a question last night that like, you know, like, you know, something about an ICO, you know, like, Mm -hmm. like what, what what advice do you have for like, you know, running an ICO investment right now? Like you dump immediately on an exchange or, you know, dump it right now. Um, Like, do you sell into that initial pop? Like, are there, is there even initial pops now or, there are initial pops, but increasingly rare, mm-hmm. unless it's a good project. I, I would say that, I mean, so the other day I had a project, I don't want to name it, but it came out, and I think it's like barely above ICO, like 5% above ICO. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this is, I locked up my ETH for like three, four months for this. Right. And now it's that big, that was yesterday, so I'm pretty sure now it's under ICO because everything's dumb. Right. So I'm like, oh great, like now I have all this money and now I have to hope that like eventually like they're going to get their shit straight. And I think they will, but it's like all this opportunity cost where I could have just like tethered up, break even, fuck, fucking bought more ETH, bought this shit lower. I would have like compounded my gains. Right. But now because I just got lazy, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, and you uh, didn't sell yesterday on the, on the exchange listing? Like, you're still holding the token? Yeah, yeah. Well, part of that was a distribution er- issue. Mm-hmm. We just got it. Like, it listed, and then we still hadn't gotten the token for, like, a month. That sucks. Yeah, was it through it. a pool? or? It was through a pool. Yeah. So, you know who's dumping. <laughs> you know, we were you just after- furious at the, at the managers of the pool? No, nah, I just, just, whatever. I just, uh, I just, I just kind of, like, it doesn't even. It wasn't even that big of a bag. Okay. But it's still, you know. But so much of that is is about the market. I mean, like yesterday in particular, all alts dumped. You know, like what a bad day to have an initial listing. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. all alts dumped yesterday. Right, right. So it's sort of like. It's uh, you know. It was just bad luck, really. 
Yeah, but you know, Bitcoin will go up to I don't know after three k, it'll it'll go up to what seven again. Everything will be up and down. Do it then. And it's just, do you want to wait that long, or do you just want to like get out with what you can? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Man, I'm sorry to hear that. Nah, it's not bad. Just gotta take it. You gotta take the L's, man. I mean, that's the hardest thing about trading is that is is losing money <laughs> you know? it's like it, it's really hard to get used to to that aspect of it because it's a normal aspect of trading but it is hard but you you no one likes the feeling of failing yeah, no one, no one you know like, you you really want to like win all the time and never lose but that's, but that's not. like the worst attitude because you're you're gonna get you're too rigid in your attitude you want to like minimize your losses and that, that's it but you will lose and the thing and is, if, you if you're yeah. always winning, then you're not taking big enough risks. Exactly. So it, it's really not realistic. Um, so how do you see this evolving? Like, because I, I see the pools, like, the, you know, the pools I'm sort of exposed to are like scrambling. Like some of them are, you know, some of them are KYCing like everybody in the pool, which I, I'm like, that's a yeah. new development, and that for an American like me, like that puts me out of the game. Yeah, um, I would say reach out to friends and family across the globe. <laughs> Seriously, but I mean, but even with doing that, like you know, with every every I see, I was different. Like some, you have to have like you know a selfie holding this, and some with that holding that. It, you know, it's like yeah, I mean, who do these people think they are? Honestly, of, uh, advice on here, like reach out to friends. You're okay. Nobody's watching this. <laughs> like, obviously, you know, everybody this is on the financial East Coast. advice. This is all just uh, what I've seen. I'm just sharing my accounts, and we are not liable for anything that you guys do. Just saying. But um, yeah, you know, I've seen I've seen people. That's take, a good way to put it. I've seen people take a friend or family passport, have them hold a piece of paper, and then they'll just you know, write, it's a blank piece of paper, but they'll just write whatever they want on it. Photoshop, like. They'll just Photoshop with like a brush or something, and then yeah. maybe, you know, make, add a little blur to it, kind of looks realistic, and then boom. So people will ask you to write whatever, they'll be like, write the date, write the coin, and write all this shit, and you're like, oh, fucking A, like. But like, I, where I'm coming from is like, where do these, do these projects get off, like, who, you know, who, it's like, they're, they're so self-important. Like, who has time for this bullshit? That, you know, they it's think... All, it's all cover your ass. But, like, their stupid KYC is so important that I have to spend, like, two hours out of my day doing your stupid, like, jump through hoops KYC bullshit. Like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much, if you want that allocation. Ugh, it's so dumb. Yeah. That's why I think just, um... You know, if you have friends and family overseas, have them for you or somehow get their credentials and be like, hey, do you want to use this card? Are we credentialed or whatever? But, but yeah, you know, she got out of Switzerland. Like, if you're from Switzerland, like, just switch languages. If you're from India, you're probably good forever. If you're from Pakistan, like Afghanistan, you're never going to be good. Yeah. Ever. It doesn't matter if you're real. Like, no one's going to take your shit. They're gonna think it's like terror money, right? Black money. If you're from Russia, maybe China, no, U.S. no. So you have to, you have to, like, you have to be in a country that's like legit, but not, but that's also like open to business. Singapore, Hong Kong, a lot of Eastern European countries want crypto because it's gonna give them money. They mm -hmm. want companies to come there and establish uh, LLCs there so they can get the tax money. So they're not going to stop their people from investing there, but the bigger companies, the bigger countries, are like no. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to evolve. It's going to get stricter. It's going to get scammier. It's going to get. Um, like, do you see most of these pools going away pretty soon? Not pretty soon. They'll be, they'll be, man. You know how many shitty projects there are that can't get <laughs> allocations. There's going to be so many allocations still. So you're like, what the fuck is this? You're raising forty million dollars for what? Just the worst app of year. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but no one's gonna fill the allocation, so they're gonna go towards the most newbie pools. And 
people will fill them. But they will fill them like, you know, point to ETH, like baby, baby allocations, right? Like if you have like 10,000 people, you could get like 300 ETH out of that. Like, Bit, did you see where Bitbless and I were talking about this terrible pool that we're both in? No. <laughs> we were chatting about it the other day. Like, this, this guy can't be older than like 19, like running this pool. <laughs> Way he acts. <laughs> <He's> just, <laughs> like, called him a scrub. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Made me laugh. And I was like, yeah, I don't want somebody who's, like, handling my money, like, acting like a fool, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Um, oh, Lambo pool? Is that the pool? Yeah, how did you guess? He even wrote it in the chat. Oh, oh, he did. <laughs> hey, Bitbless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that guy's they an wanted, idiot. Uh, I think I got it. I think I went to their website and then, um, like, I put in my email, and then they wanted me to do KYC on their website. Look, now like, they're running a private. They're running a private Discord for like 0. 0.2 ETH a month. I'm like, fuck that's you. A, that's the best. That's the best scam ever. It's crazy. And what they do is, if you submit your KYC to a pool, guess how many allocations they have now? You give them all your passport, all your photos, and your utility bills and whatever the hell your whole gamut, everything that you have as an identity. Oh, and food. now they can get an, they can get whitelist based on your information, right? That's crazy. Yeah. You have to trust them not to though. They're you can't trust these idiots. No. Like they act like it's called Lambo Pool. I mean, it's called Lambo Pool. <laughs> it's called Lambo Pool. If you if you're going ham on a Lambo Pool. <laughs> I, mean, I never 20, said I'm going ham know, on Lambo pools. I'm talking about 2018. You're man. acting like I'm marrying Lambo pools. I mean, <laughs> sounds, it sounds like they know the market they want to get. The noobs. <laughs> Lambo pools? That sounds like a good deal to me. Sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Oh my god! Oh, just stick to trading. Don't just don't lose. Well, it. and and how we started chatting about it was was um, uh, Bitbless was saying like, oh, I know of like a, a thunder allocation, and and I I was I replied and I was like, well, I'm in this one pool that like literally can't seem to get rid of their thunder allocation. <laughs> like they were like begging people to take <laughs> oh, their fucking fuck. thunder allocation. <laughs> They're like, no, we got stuck holding the bag. No, I mean, it was like that. They were, like, pinning this desperate message to their Telegram, like, every hour on the hour. Like, we've still got thunder, guys. Like, you know, it's going to run out soon. We've still got thunder. But you know how, like, it starts to sound, like, desperate? You know? why no one's biting you. Like, yes. Ooh. And they, they, like, add more emojis <laughs> to oh, make it seem, like, hot. Uh, you know? Like, more fire emojis. <laughs> yeah, well, now he's going to have to deal with a big bag of thunder. <laughs> That nobody wants to gonna dump. The VCs are just gonna dump. dump. <laughs> so yeah, if you get stuck in the middle as a pool administrator, you're so fucked because the people who benefit then are the the VCs and the plebs because they're like, ah, right, we're gonna buy low as fuck, and then the VCs are like, ah, oh, we're already making a profit, but you're just like, fuck, because everyone's <laughs> dumping on you, and and the noobs are like, hey, I bought it for like five x under ICO, like awesome. And you're like, oh my gosh. That's, that's so in that brutal. situation, what, in that situation, does this does this, does this like nineteen year old idiot like he got fucked. does he have to like buy it all in cash like like with the cash that he scammed from his pool like does he like is he left literally holding the bag like yeah yeah he has to like buy that entire allocation himself. I mean, it's not that he has to like basically what'll happen is. If he has 200 ETH and he's only filled like 100 ETH, and then the VCs are like, yo, we already passed this to you. And if he doesn't fill that in, basically, it depends on how um, how nice the team, the project wants to be. If they're like, oh, well, you didn't fill it, like, either it'll get back to the VC, because I don't know how transparent the VC is and like, oh, we packed the cash to buck along. Or it'll get back to him and they're like, oh, you didn't fill it? Well, you know what? We're going to lock your shit up even more. Like, we're going to increase. We're going to give you less tokens. Like, they have more leverage to fuck you over even more. <laughs> so he's just really screwed, basically. My God. Um, especially if you didn't go through the... Uh, if you didn't get the allocation through, like, some, some somebody who vouched for you. If you're just, like, friend of a friend of a friend and you just got stuck holding the bag, if you don't fill it, like... You know, yeah, the project's going to get their money from somewhere eventually, but because you didn't meet your end of the deal, 
you're going to get screwed more by the project, by the VC, by whatever. They're going to be like, oh. Because then you damage your relationships, like, if you don't follow through. Yeah. And, and in this game, like, if, if you can't get is. future allocations, then you've got no oh. pool. Um, so, so basically, like, this, like, you know, this little scrub is kind of playing a risky, dangerous game. Like, like he could, like, kind of be left, like, holding the bag on, like, one allocation and kind of lose everything. Um, lose everything, but remember, in crypto, people forget unless you're a scammer. If you're an incompetent person and somebody passed the buck and you got stuck, they'll be like, oh, well, he's got a purpose, too. Like, maybe I could pass my buck along to him and maybe he'll, take, maybe he'll bite. But if you're a scammer, that's when it's no, no more talking. Be like, yo, blacklist, whatever, this guy, okay, no. Yeah. But if you're just an idiot, nah, people, people will still fuck with you. They're like, yeah, like, yo, we would love to give you allocation. Because they're just, de VCs are desperate to unload oh, their yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. We love, we got this hot allocation, man. We need to get Thunder Token. It's going to, it's going to go, it's going to go, it's going to, it's a legit project. <laughs> it's legit, dude. I mean, I think Bitplus was trying to unload his his Thunder on us. <laughs> I think that's what he, I think that's why it came up. <laughs> yeah. Um. Do you, do you want to talk at all about that one experience or no? I think you know which one that I'm alluding to. The one where we had to go... Uh, the ACP? No. Uh, remember when, uh, remember when uh, you unfollowed me for a period of... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You don't want to talk about that? No, okay. No, there's, no, there's no point. There's no point. Okay. All right, we'll talk yeah. about it in like a year. Yeah, no, in a couple of months. Next couple months. When everything's blown over. Shit. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who's this Julie? What? Hey, what? No, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to like. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. Allude. Um. Okay. So, whatever. What other questions can I ask? Uh, no questions from the chat. There's six people. I guess no one's really. Well, I know that's usually like the people. The interaction levels are extremely. I know. I don't. I feel you like gotta, maybe it's because I'm just talking to somebody off screen. To to the, I know. Yeah. I need to like talk to the chat more. Or maybe like chart something. Or hey guys, like if anybody is still watching this, like, uh, do you have any questions for my friend who is anonymous, or uh, do you want to chart anything, or are you just like, are you all hanging from nooses? <laughs> like, They're just like, oh, I, don't know what's I feel like I'm it's. Like, I'm so drunk. Like, I'm just, like this is just so. Like, I think. Life. I think part of the reason why the chat, like, we don't have a lot of viewers is because it's, like, it's 1043 on a Friday night, and so, like, we're, you know, Friday, yeah. we've lost the East Coast viewers, for one thing, you know, it's, like, too yeah, late for like East Coast. Really, like, lonely, nerdy West Coast people. Yeah, it's just lonely nerds like us. Um, why aren't you out, like, partying, man? <laughs> um, Crypto party. So, uh... Just hanging for the smart people talk. Hey, thanks, Problem Bear. Is there? A, are, hey. Do you want us to chart any coins, or do you want to talk about ICOs? Do you have any questions about ICOs at all? Because my friend who's here at my house um, is kind of an ICO expert, and so I was just like asking him, uh, when Bitcoin ETF? Hey, that's a g great question. If I knew the answer to that, when I feel Bitcoin like. Bitcoin ETF. Do we even have a sense of that, or? No. Has there been any like news on that? Okay. Do you, I don't know if you guys, like, I don't know what your opinions on this are, but will the Bitcoin ETF come through before Tether's transparency is validated? Like, is Tether... I mean, is do you Tether believe that be... report, that audit that just came out? Fuck no. Fuck no. Okay. Tether, you hate man. Tether. You, you've been know, afraid of Tether, Tether this whole and time. Tether's the best scam. I'm in Tether. And true USD on my hedging, but I have some Tether, but I'm just like... Did you totally cash up? No, no, no. no. It's, it's still in crypto, but it's in TUSD. Uh -huh. This is a different, like, synthetic dollar thing. Right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Brock Pierce, you saw that photo? Yeah, that's Holy pretty fuck, scary dude. photo. That's just tw Twitter handle. It's just, I mean, look at this. Wait, you're not an EOS at all, are you? No, no, no. Okay. I, I was going to say, why all this Brock Pierce hate? Like, you seem to hate him with the... The hate of a EOS community member. No, nah, just because, like, this is a guy that is shilling people and this is their first impression of crypto and this is just this is just a disgrace this is a, this is like a charlatan yeah i actually didn't know who that was a picture of and now that i know that that's brock pierce's like holy fuck wait did you know that he has this like he bought like an old art museum in um, puerto rico 
that he he filled with like 12 traders yeah can you imagine living with 12 crypto traders in puerto rico with brock pierce oh, God. like that what is what is that's my worst nightmare that's dude horrible. it's horrible like it, that's like you know if that were a reality show it would be like a horror reality show <laughs> Fuck, Can you my boss? imagine? Me now. Like, and living in the house? I mean, with 12 like crypto traders? While you're surrounded by a bunch of, like, poor, hurricane-struck people. Who, who don't have electricity. Who are trying to survive, and you're like, oh, you know, I just made, like, $100,000 pumping, like, EOS. And, like, I mean, it's like, it's like the worst thing I can imagine. Like... It's like so tone deaf and so awful. Like, I mean, it's, it's the ideal autistic life. Yeah. It's the perfect autistic it's, life. You know what it also is? It's so gay. <laughs> well, you don't know if they're guys, do you? Well, I mean, yeah, they're they're not probably, necessarily. They're ninety-nine percent dudes. They have you. You've got to believe that it's going to be all dudes, because also, I mean, nothing against gay people, but it's, 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 you know, for, for being such a like, sexist, homophobic community, this community is so gay. Like the crypto Ooh, community. Did you guys hear that? The crypto community is <laughs> I mean, a, bunch it's... Of, a bunch of gay boys. But I'm just saying that, like, you know, this idea of, like, putting 12 crypto dudes in a house together, you know, it's just sort of like... That's that's a red flag, man. What are you, starting a trading desk? Like, is that what you call it? It's... it's I mean, and that's his... That's his... Uh, that's his... Gay and proud. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously, I mean, I live with a gay man. Like, I have nothing against gay people, but, like... Is this your internal homophobia coming out? My point is that... You ignored him. This, this community is so, like, you know, homophobic, and yet they don't know, they don't realize how gay this entire community is. That's my point. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's, that's like, the most... That's, yeah. That's the cognitive dissonance, right? Exactly. That's how, that's how cognitive is. dissonance, exactly. That's how it always is. Yeah, that's that's my point. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Back to the Bitcoin ETF, I I don't know when it'll come, but I'm thinking it's gonna come because what yeah. it, what, it, what so many people are submitting different iterations of this ETF proposal to the SEC, and if you think about it in traders' terms, it's like we're hitting resistance over uh -huh. and over and over. And over again, eventually, if people it's keep gonna doing go it, through. it's going to go through when yeah. the market regulates, when pension funds are in crypto, when tethers stopped and when all these exchanges are regulated tightly, when there's more, whatever, two, five, ten years. I think it'll come eventually because the Bitcoin meme isn't dying. People are still believing more people are getting ready for shit. So I don't I think it'll come, but I don't know when I would say definitely not this year, though. Maybe in the next couple of years. Maybe the next three years. Maybe. Yeah. By 2020. And do you think that'll make such a big difference? Like, you know, with yeah. it will? Okay. Oh, I mean, that's the most legitimate thing. Uh -huh. That's like, if the SEC legitimizes an ETF, what that opens the door is, it sets a precedent that, like, hey, crypto is legit. Like, this is a legit investment this vehicle legit, now. This is a legit Like, asset. welcome institutions, essentially. Welcome institutions. And then it's, yeah. then everyone's moon kid. We'll literally, we'll be, we, we will be moon Then you're going to feel free to fly your moon kid flag? Moon, yeah, we're going to be on the moon. There's no, if institutions get in, like, it's game over. Like, even if they put in 1% of it, it's, that's so much money. Yeah. Like, shit. But will they? Or will it be the SEC, right? That's the meme. So let's talk about, um, you know, given this bear market and, and, you know, what a shit show everything is and how, like, all these VCs are dumping all over, you know, the pools and the plebs and everything. Yeah. Let's talk about what makes our beloved investment FMF oh. so special. Yeah, let's let's if, talk if you're comfortable, if you're if you're yeah, not. I'm down to show. FMF, man. FMF is gonna be the a crypto bank. See, those two words don't really go well together in this space, but FMF. Yeah. By the way, this is a this shill, is one guys. bank we actually like. Yeah, this, this is, is we have to like caveat this caveat, with with the uh, actual shill because uh, we and Bitbless here in the chat are all uh, proud investors in FMF. I'll write it here in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I've been chilling this pretty heavily, so anybody who watches me regularly knows about this by now and is sick of it. 
Um, yeah, so, I mean, FMF, Formosa Financial. Formosa is just another word for beautiful island, if you didn't know. But basically what it refers to is a Taiwan crypto bank. And they're just trying to compete with Malta. They're just trying to compete with Hong Kong. They're just trying to get some of the market share and not be left behind. And a lot of the blockchain space is in Asia because they're a little more friendly to this technology. Like They like this phone. They like the tech. Whereas in the U.S. and the Western world, you have all these institutions set up that like crypto may not really be as necessary. But in Asia, yeah. it's like, oh, wow, a lot of these like poor people don't have any bank accounts. So, you know what, like we can do this crypto thing and really help them, too. So Asia is where a lot of development is. And Taiwan wants to become a crypto hub. And a lot of projects right now having a lot of difficulty, if you're an ICO, trying to uh, create your company with a traditional bank. They're like, what the fuck is this ICO? Trash. Like, they, yeah. don't, they don't want to touch it. There's a lot of regulatory compliance. Where'd you get this money from? I don't know. You do KYC? Okay. If you go to a crypto bank, they're all familiar with this. They'll figure it out. They'll work with you. They'll have those services ready. And so Formosa is trying to be that bank for Taiwan. And um, you need to have FMF tokens to use services for the bank. So basically their clients, basically what's going to make FMF Moon is other crypto companies holding FMF to access their services. And so we also think it's going to hit a big exchange, right? Yeah, hopefully in the next few weeks, right? Hopefully in the next few weeks, yeah. Um, Do you feel like there's any chance that that'll get like pushed out or at all? Or It could, it could, but eventually it will hit a big exchange, I believe. Um, there's you know a lot of rumors of different exchanges coming up, but the bear market might not happen as uh, at the time we watch. But yeah, FMF, just keep an eye out for it. I mean, it might it might might take a couple of weeks to a month or something to come out, but it's on IDEX. Keep an eye out on it. Um, a lot of the politicians in Taiwan are kind of behind it, um, so that's kind of key. If you think they're gonna make take an L on their bags, like you got to be out of your mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just keep an eye on it. I, I think like shilling FMF in a bear market, you know, obviously have some flat, have some Bitcoin, have some Ethereum, but keep an eye on FMF because this trend in the space is getting more institutional, getting more big players in. And so whether that's banks, whether that's hedge funds, whether that's pensions, whatever, FMF is just one iteration of that, one try, one experiment, right? You have quote-unquote crypto bank in Taiwan that's being tried out, and politicians are kind of getting behind it. Okay, if the trend is more institutional, big boys want to come in and play, like, I want to keep out for projects, I want to keep an eye out for projects like that. So that's why I think FMF is going to be interesting. Also, the exchange listings. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how what else to shill right now. Yeah, that was a jump. perfect shill because I've already shilled it so many times. I feel like you know they're sick of hearing what I say about it. Yeah. Um, just just keep an eye out on it. I, I don't recommend you going out and buying it just right now. Market's gonna keep dumping, but you know I might average down. I might not. I have some. I have a good size bag, so I don't know. But just keep an eye out on it, and just keep an eye out on projects that deal with institutional big money scale things like that because that's the next the retail phase is over the retail wave is over like if you look at the trend the retail was 2017 december yeah 2018 january like mid and to the middle of jan then it's gone retail got burned like retail was ripple now it's actual utility or like pensions and institutional and maybe the waves are like retail or like Retail, institutional, and then actual utility? I don't know. Maybe it's utility, then pens, and then institutional? I don't know. Well, that's one thing I was going to ask you about FMF, that, like, I don't love the idea of them, like, using the tokens as, like, a utility token, you know? like it's I. Not, it, the utility is pretty weak. Yeah. Oh, you want to access our bank? Well, you need to buy FMF tokens. Like, oh, can we just pay you in cash? Like, no, you need to buy FMF tokens. Like, I, I just don't think that, like... It's not the best... Companies are going to like that, you know? Like, we have so to hold the, this random, like... No, no, no. They won't... They won't... So they can pay in dollars. They can pay okay. in Taiwanese dollars. 
but it'll always get converted to FMM token. Oh, okay. And then they'll just take that out of circulation. Uh huh. When you take things out of circulation, that increases the price more. And okay. Well, so you reduce that's good. supply. That that's the but it's still a weak utility. I think they'll add other features to it. I mean, a crypto bank has still never been tried, so I'm really interested to see what the hell they do. Yeah. Um. But being they being the fact that they're in the Asian market, I have a lot more. I'm a lot more bullish. Yeah. There and one thing you have to understand in Taiwan, they passed a, a self uh, regulatory kind of um, not law, but an understanding where they're not going to go and like unnecessarily regulate a whole bunch of shit. They're gonna. They're oh, gonna I let, saw, there's like an article or something. Yeah, like it's just today. Or... No, it's been a while back. Like mm. a self regulatory board or whatever. Basically, the companies are promising. They're like, "Hey, we're gonna just try a lot of shit, and we're gonna do our best to self-regulate ourselves. So we're not gonna waste any. Uh, we're not gonna slow down innovation. But you know, the moment there's like a huge scam or something happens, then the politicians and people are gonna come down and be like, "Yo, man, we gotta regulate this a little more strict." But until that happens, I think there's a lot of room for growth. So, Bitbless says staking on or oh, staking in. Oh yeah, staking also is coming in the future. And that is just for people who want to access the bank. You literally have to buy the tokens and take them out of supply and stake it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, still not the best utility, but it makes sense, you know. So, yeah, that, that's that's a decent utility. Um. Okay, yeah. I still need to take take my walk for the night, and it's oh. eleven p.m. Oh. You want to go for a walk? Yes, we can go for a walk. How's the? Uh, how's everybody doing? I don't, we're not getting like any questions. So I, I, mean, feel I don't like... even know if I like, do we even help anybody? Uh, oh, well, sure. Bitbless is saying he's going to jump on voice, but I, you know what? I think I need to go for my walk. So can you, Bitbless, can you jump on voice like tomorrow night or the next night? Because I think that I need to like go for my walk and go to bed. Right. Oh, because I don't think he realizes that we're calling this quits. Let me at him. He looks like he's driving. He looks like he's uh he's te texting he looks, in the stream and driving. He's twitching and driving. Jesus. Oh no. Okay. This is so dangerous for him to be doing this. Is he like drunk driving? Like, where's he coming from? No, he's not. He's fine. All right. Uh, okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to raid Turnip Stream. I'm assuming he's still on. So oh, yeah. I'm going to push whoever we've got in here into Turnips. Um, let's see. What, what should our mate. Okay, our raid message is going to be thank you for subscribing. I'll just type it in here so you guys can copy it. Because Turnip is our one and only subscriber. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he's not driving. Okay. So our raid message to Turnip is... That's what we're gonna. That's what we're uh -huh. gonna say to Ooh. turn it. So everybody, copy and paste that as we travel into Turnip Stream. Oh, that's what Raid is. You just copy paste. Well, I'm Raid gonna push like you all into his stream, and then everybody says something into his chat. It'll just be like us two. Probably. I know. <laughs> Didn't even go. Wait, I have to do it right now. I'll tell you when you should be in Seven there. Seven viewers, all one name, and you. <laughs> oh shit, we're raiding. Leave? Oh, I should go. So you get the choice that you can leave if you don't want to go over to Turnip. No, I'm fine. Okay, I'm calling it quits here, guys. Good night, and I love you guys. Bye. Try to get the interaction going.